What's worth more, a dollar today or a dollar tomorrow? Almost nobody gets out of love alive. Prisoners' rights is out of sight. Out of mind. Is your brain on the Hello? All right, fellas, I'm going to try to start this Google and the Ghost thing. I don't know how that shit's going to work. Um, but, yeah, just real quick, I just finished watching the video that Ye sent with um, Jason Whitlock talking about Kaepernick not being a serious activist and all that, um, and just a Twitter troll. You know, um, ultimately, man, the ironic thing is I actually agree with the idea of, well, with the white guy and his, his idea of basically... All this stuff that, you know, is happening with Travis Scott and Travis Scott calling out a big boy. Well, actually not Travis Scott. I'm sorry. Kaepernick calling out Travis Scott and big boy. We're doing the Super Bowl thing is creating more division in the social justice world than anything else. And I agree with that. I also kind of feel like that this is a thing that's happening with the Whitlock thing. I think I think ultimately, um, I think me and you talked about it before yet, um, that, you know, there are different different parts of this fight that we need to actually focus on and and we can't always go at each other like i'm, I'm not sure about exactly what was said by kaepernick and so forth. um it looked like a lot of that stuff was applied through retweets more than anything else um i think i think i think we're not doing well here like i think honestly a lot of this shit that is happening is, is now we're trying to create another tribalism that we don't need we need to start creating more unifications on, on the stuff that we actually agree on, that we disagree on. You know, I don't take all the Willock's uh, points about the shit, um, at least prior to it, but I do I do believe this is this is creating a, a, a much worse issue than anything else. Yeah, just to add on to that, man, I think also this is part of the worry that I have with Kaepernick. Um, the fact is, you know, especially when he got on with Nike, that you know, this is this is a man who, who pretty much is is a uh, celebrity, right? Um, party to it. He got more famous because of that. But you gotta realize once you see that fame, um, how many people are actually going to actually jump onto that? How many people are actually going to um, use that that little bit of fame they got and ride it out? I'm not sure if this is the case with Kaepernick, but I think that's the worry what the people have about black celebrities. Um, that basically, you know, we see some injustice. We see we see uh, that these people are, are rallying behind this injustice. Um, let's c capitalize off of that. That's the same idea, I think, with white money. Back in the day, uh, supporting uh, all these social justice causes, uh, especially in the civil rights era. Um, I think that is also some of the issues we have when, when these celebrities back certain things up. But I think, you know, for the most part, we got to take that as they come, case by case. So, you know, I think I think that is always kind of the worry with these black celebrities. The thing with me, though, is that I see, at least as far as Kaepernick, I, I don't follow him that much anymore. But in the beginning, that he was giving a lot of money to these causes beyond him. I think that's the best thing most most celebrities can do is to back up these causes that are trying to help the people out there. And he has done that much. So I would definitely give him credit for that. Uh, and I, I would give credit to anybody else, especially like Jay-Z and all that stuff, who actually put money behind it. I, I, uh, I just read a story recently with Nas and him uh, feeding all these furloughed workers during the shutdown for free. Uh, some restaurant he got, I want to say in Brooklyn or maybe Queens. Um, and I commend that. I commend that's what celebrities should do. So I think I think that that you know there, there's there's a, a there are certain aspects that you have to look at when it comes to these celebrities. So I, I don't always take the full argument about you know the fact of them doing it, but it's always a worry. It's definitely always a worry. Ayo, G. Clean, reality gurus. Ayo, D. B. Let's go ahead and get the chopping up this fable real quick. Uh, so first off, let me just uh, oh the white guy, Mark Schlereth. Um, uh, he's gonna have to stand down in in this situation, honestly, because uh, you know what I mean. In order for you to weigh in on this topic, man, you gotta have. Or share the experience And you know We all know that he doesn't share the experience No disrespect You know what I'm saying I appreciate what you did um, For the game um, You know Dope analysts You know 
probably an all around great guy, but with regard to this situation, um, you know, if they continue to start having discussions about this Colin Kaepernick thing or whatever, you know, in you know, in situations. I mean, because I, I mean, he's calling these individuals out, you know what I'm saying? So in situations when he's calling people out or whatever, just, you know, sit back, fold your hands and, you know, and just listen and learn to what's going on. Just because, um, you know, you weighing in kind of, you know, muddles things, you feel what I'm saying? You know, um, James Harrison, he kind of took the simplest approach, I think, um, by just by saying, you know, you know, I ain't nobody hasn't, hasn't told me what to do since I was 18, yada, yada. That's the simplest, you know, approach to this thing. It gets deeper than that. You know, once you get past all of that, you know what I'm saying, there's a conversation that needs to be had. You know what I'm saying? Between those two parties or three parties, I should say, Big Boy, Travis Scott, and Colin. Now, now for me, the, the, the person that I kind of, you know, lean towards a little bit is Marcellus Wiley. And that's kind of because, you know, I'm wondering now, like, what what is this about now? You know what I'm saying? Um, the only thing that I could pull from this that would make sense is 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 this is just to continue to keep the conversation, you know, active. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, fuck, fuck happened a couple weeks ago. You got the R. Kelly, you got the Michael Jackson, you got the shutdown. You know what I'm saying? You got all that. You know what I'm saying? Um, kind of dominating the airwaves and the internet and stuff. You know, so. Um, the situation with Colin Kaepernick definitely got pushed to the back burner now um, in the social justice situation. So, I mean, if that would be the only thing I could see, you know, him, 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 you know, jumping out there and and pointing fingers like right now, because, um, you know, last time we spoke, the understanding is with the old Jenkins and, and Reed situation, um, there was a deal that was reached. Where, uh, you know, because I told y'all before, I never really felt the NFL was responsible for any of this stuff in the first place. Um, it was com- it was it was incredible that, you know, they were able to, you know, get to the point where they strong on the NFL for 87 million dollars. But, you know, after you do that, like what else? What else is the NFL responsible for? So why continue to, um, you know, kind of poke the bear, so to speak? Unless it's just to keep the conversation active. Other than that, um, you know, I don't know, man. I, I don't know what the motive behind this shit could be, uh, really. But um, y'all let me know how y'all feel. Yo, what's good? Uh, first of all, G, you ain't got to uh, do your little intro. I know who you is, son. Um, but, all right, yeah, so I actually agree with you about the white dude. I think I think that's in general when it comes to black issues, white people should normally sit down. Um, I think the thing about this situation, though, and that's why I said ironically in the first place, um, that I agree with anything that he said. But the fact that he was even uh, invited into the conversation, um begs a bigger question of why he was even there. Um, as far as, as everything else, as far as especially the motive, I think the motive is maybe at this point beyond the NFL. It was more maybe a, a situation between Kaepernick and Travis Scott and Big Boy, and mainly, I guess, it has to deal with loyalties and, and unity uh, as black people on the whole. You know, um, I think... Even though the situation with Reed and Jenkins, I think the fact that Kaepernick is outside of the NFL, still outside of the NFL, but kind of tied in with the NFL, is always going to be part of that, being that there's still issues that he probably has with the NFL and the way it's being treated. Um, as far as the whole boycotting the NFL period, which is something that never really, really came to fruition, um, I think all of that plays into the situation right now and the fact that, you know, you know, the, I don't think uh, there was anybody black ever since Beyonce's performance, which was pretty, was taken as melting by a lot of white people um, for her little Jen Jackson moves and shit. Um, but the nation, <laughs> you know, me moves and all that. You know, I, um, I think a lot of that is pretty much what's going on here. I don't, I don't know if it's really as, as something intricate as in um, trying to more out the NFL as in trying to get more black people on board and that's that's if that's being an honest 
movement that's happening. And that's an honest criticism um, between Kaepernick and, and Travis Scott and even Jay-Z and Travis Scott and, and Big Boy. You know, I don't agree with the whole idea of calling anybody sellout um, or calling them coons in general. I don't think that that was thrown out in this situation. Um, I think the, the problem with me, and this is why I kind of agree with the point, that small point with the white guy, is that this is just creating more division instead of having actual conversation. The same thing with the Reed and the Jenkins. It was more division than having a conversation amongst ourselves. The fact is, you know, you're right. We shouldn't have other people in our fight. Um, we should be able to, to work out these differences between us before we even go out there and try to get anything out of anybody else. So um, I think ultimately that that's... That's what it is for me. I don't I don't know exactly what they're trying to pull because there is nothing out there. There's nothing saying this is what we want besides Kaepernick telling Travis Scott, you need to ride with us. So, and I think that might be subliminal. I don't even think he said it himself from my understanding. I haven't been following the full story, but um, it looks like a lot of that stuff is through retweeting and all that stuff. So that's basically what it seems like. I don't, I don't think there's anything bigger than that, but that might just be me. Um, you know, not involved and not really involved, uh, not really being about the NFL being kind of bigger than that. I, I'm not sure, man. You know, if I'm speaking uh, objectively, I, I, I gotta, I gotta call bullshit on that just because then how would, you know, Big Boy and Travis Scott be sellouts then? Like, if it has nothing to do with the NFL, right? Then what actions? What what actions? What which which of Travis Scott and Big Boy's actions? You know, could you categorize as you know them as being a sellout? You know, if it's not about the NFL, I'm thinking that the only reason that he's pointing fingers is because um, they're doing business with the NFL. You know, um, you know, performing at the halftime show. So. Um, if not, then, then why else? You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that when the All-Star game for NBA rolls around, uh, whatever black celebrity performer is there, you know, Colin Kaepernick's not going to tweet about them. You know what I'm saying? You know, so the question is, um, why are you still trying to evolve the NFL in this situation? Um, Colin Kaepernick's biggest problem, in my opinion, is that he's not vocal enough. He doesn't really speak because um, you leave people, you know, out there to kind of, you know, decide for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, what your intentions are. Because <clears throat> for right now, like, again, me being honest, outside of, of, of the idea of just keeping the conversation alive, you know what I'm saying? On the surface, the shit looks like you just trying to keep uh, the NFL involved, you know what I'm saying, keep this shit alive, you know, because you're trying to get your job back. You see what I'm saying? And then then that's going to make me question, you know, are you using the struggle or using, you know, this social justice issue as as leverage to get your job back? So that's the problem. If you don't want people to start thinking that way, then you got to be a little more vocal, you know, because actions like this without anything, you know, any information to support it. You're going to leave, leave, leave people who, um, you know, otherwise might not, you know, think a lot of things through. Just look on the surface and feel like, yeah, he's using this uh, this situation to try to squeeze the NFL to get his job back. You know, I don't know. Y'all let me know. Um, yeah, when I say it's not about the NFL, I was really referring to kind of... The idea that you was given before with Reed and Jenkins and so forth. But part of it was getting uh, Colin Kaepernick's job back, but most of it was to do something with social justice. Um, I didn't see that with this situation per se, as far as in having a very clear objective like that. Um, I do say it's personal. If it's a matter of getting his job back, I don't know. I think it might be more a... a uh, Retribution type of thing, maybe, honestly. Like, I think it, there might be some shit to the fact that, you know, this started with the whole situation of me um, kneeling. It became a bigger issue. Um, I, I got let go from it. I got let go from the, the, the organization because of it. Um, you know, and on top of that, um, pretty much it's still business as usual. Nothing really changed much. Um, 
So I think I think there's a lot of reasons. So I agree. The fact that he left it open ended, um, we could go back and forth about what the actual reason is. I will agree though that I think um, that he won't speak out on other issues because the fact is you could have speak out on other things from the jump. You should have speak out on other things from the jump because um, you know the NFL has been moving without you. You know what I mean? So if it was really about the boycott and everything else, and mind you, he wasn't even really speaking too much when the boycott was happening, even though he was kind of the the, the poster child for it. So you know there is a lot of things that he leaves in question. I, th- I think um, ultimately that, that is a problem. Um, and I also do agree that there there might be possibly another reason of keeping it alive is because that that is your wheelhouse right now. Um, you became bigger than a quarterback because of this. You got pretty much your Nike campaign because of this. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's happening with his book. I know he's going to write a book at one time. Um, I'm pretty sure a lot of stuff happened a lot of stuff you're going to put in the book is because of this. So this is probably extended out a little bit more. So that that is my worry with him. That was my worry when he was joining with Nike. Um, it becomes an idea of now if it's a paycheck or not. You know, the thing is that he still has a platform. You know, his platform before was the NFL. Um, and, and basically kneeling in the first place. And, and, you know, it opened up the door to have a conversation. Now you are... Um, Twitter famous. <laughs> now, now you have the campaign going behind you with Nike. Um, you still have that platform. You have a bigger platform, as a matter of fact, because now people are paying attention to you directly. Um, you know, you are a name that is getting synonymous with it. So I agree with that, and I agree. I agree um, with all of that. I, I um. So my thing is just as far as the NFL thing, man. Maybe, maybe it's just. You know, what exactly he wants from the NFL, I don't necessarily know. I don't necessarily see it being that because I don't know what you would even do with your job once you get back to having your job. Um, It's not going to be the same. So I I don't even know if it's that. I don't even know if it's worth it because I I don't know his net worth is now. I don't know exactly what his moves are now. But he he might be beyond the NFL where he doesn't even need the NFL. Uh, because he got these other things going, um, but that might be a reason to with the NFL. So that 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 is um that is where I'm at with that. I, I just really you know for me the the main parts that I go back to though honestly is the fact of calling big boys sellout, calling Travis Scott a sellout, um, taking these two names because they're bigger, um, because they are linked with the NFL. You know, um, you're, you're making it more personal. It does seem like you're making it more personal instead of actually what the business is about. I kind of feel like maybe in some ways, again, mentioning the Reed and, and Jenkins situation, um, this is where there is no communication between some certain parties and, and everybody is going by their own motive. And that is bad for any movement. So that's where I'm at with that. <laughs> Again, so um, there, there's there's the issue, like the the communication, him him actually uh, being more vocal. Because I don't, again, I don't have a problem. You know, maybe I didn't even say that, but I don't have a problem with him. Uh, you know, if he feels like these individuals are sellouts, okay, fine. You got to support it. Why is it? You know what I'm saying? Um, just one tweet doesn't help anything. You see what I'm saying? Um, not his cause, I should say. It doesn't help his cause. Just one little tweet. Um, we don't, you know, the public don't know if you had personal conversations with these gentlemen, uh, had agreements with these gentlemen, and and you know, you know, by them, uh, um, you know, exercising their right to go ahead and do business with the NFL, um, that kind of violates whatever agreement y'all might have had behind the scenes. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? But you know, the people don't know. People don't know. You know what I'm saying? So you you gotta you gotta you gotta speak up on that, man. Or you know, people like me, like because in the beginning, again, I was I'm, I'm still in support of it. You know what I'm saying? Because of what I understood that he was doing behind it. You know what I'm saying? With with his philanthropy and stuff. You know what I'm saying? But um, he's got to figure out what his next move is going to be um, because you know, continuing to involve the NFL. Um, in his his uh, 
quest for, you know, a reform, you know, social justice, you know, attention to, you know, police killings of, of unarmed black men and stuff like that. Um, it, people don't people don't get tired of hearing it, man. Really, um, that argument is. Like, first of all, like I said, I never even thought the NFL needed to be involved anyway. Um, you pulled off the heist of the century. Um, now you got to go ahead and figure out what your next move is, man. NFL's moving, man. You know, uh, their numbers are way up again. And it's going to be that way. Um, hopefully, you know, as far as the whole, you know, retribution and shit. Because if getting money from them wasn't enough and um, getting his job back is not what he's looking for, then, like, what the fuck else, what what else would it possibly be? Like, you're going to continue to just involve these these, these people, you know, involve this organization, this situation until, like, I don't don't know, man. You got to figure out your next move, man. It's a great cause. Um, Hopefully, um, you know, you can continue to have success in it, but not involving the NFL, man. Outside of that, man, uh, Colin Kaepernick, salute, baby. Yo, gurus, since we're on the go with it, let's go with it. Late night edition. I'm catching up to the messages. Um, Going back to the whole thing with uh, Whitlock, Kaepernick, and all them. The new campaign has got to be hashtag same page, hashtag same page. I'm in agreement with, you know, the dude Schlereff on the, on the scene. He shouldn't even be there. Why are our issues always aired out in the public? Why are others always, you know, uh, 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 welcomed in to expound on our issues? Get the fuck out of here. Go back to your community and talk about your issues over there because nobody welcomes us into their community's problems and welcomes our opinions on it. This is this is a black issue that need, really need to be discussed, discussed behind closed doors, not out in front of the world. But same page, hashtag same page. We need to get on the same page with how we deal with things like this. A lot of times these discussions, you know, I'm just giving an example of them, just become opinion, 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 opinion. Like... We really need to get on the same page with stuff like this. You gave the example of Harrison. He was given the whole sentiment of, um, sentiment of, um, what, what was it? Oh, I'm a grown man. You can't tell me what to do. You know, how are we going to be able to function if a whole bunch of people is running, running with that mentality out here? You know, um, you got Kaepernick. Going back to him, an issue I have. Are you going to be the spokesman? Are you going to be the leader? Do you want to be mute about it? Do you want to just be a social media guy? What do you want to be? If you're going to step in front of it, you got to be a leader. You got to speak out. You can't be a leader when 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 when, uh, when when you're emotional about it or something offends you. You know what I'm saying? You got to be a leader 100% if that's the role you done took. You know what I'm saying? You can't be a leader. You can't be a leader at one point tell motherfuckers what they can and can't do at one moment, and then at another moment we ain't even heard you. We ain't even heard you speak publicly for like a motherfucking year. So I mean, bro, you really need to take. He really needs to take cue from great leadership in the past on how to articulate in front of the public. You know what I'm saying? And we got to get on code as a people of how we need to move and how we need to come to solutions. Because if you got a hundred different people in the cipher, they throwing out a hundred different opinions, we never get to a solution and we leave arguing and in a bigger ball of confusion than when we came to the cipher. So we really need to realize who are our leaders, who are our thinkers. Let them talk. You dig what I'm saying? Not just the motherfuckers who want to talk for ratings. Not just the motherfucker who just wants to give his opinion. But the ones with the best solutions of who we key in on in situations as such. Um, I just want to add on to the leader thing because the more I think about it right now, I think part of the problem on top of the communication and, and the lack of, of leadership is a lack of an agenda. I don't think this started with their true agenda. I think, um, you know... 
you know, a while back when, when um, we first started talking about it and, you know, we had the back and forth in the group chat about um, what the whole kneeling actually meant. Like, you know, there was some people that was arguing, like, it's, it's really not shit. Like, this is, this is nothing. Protest, marches, boycotts, all of these do nothing because um, it's been done before and you know we need to do other shit like you know start schools and all that stuff and I, and I, and I completely agree with that uh, at least the last part the second part of that um, but even for the former part the fact is I always feel like you know the beneficial part of that is that it is a start to the road to get to the other part um, meaning that you know marches protests riots all of these things create attention. Um, you have to, to do certain things to gain attention. But once you get the attention, what do you do? Um, one of the things I always constantly remember is during the time of when um, Black Lives Matter really started popping up on the scene as as a, as an organization, well, not even an organization, but I guess a movement. And when, one of the things that I remember specifically, this is around the, the time of the campaign when everybody was campaigning. Hillary Clinton was there. This is the time when it was going into um, all of these uh, debates with with a lot of the, the people that were running. And they were disrupting them um, because they wanted to get black agendas on, on, on board. They wanted to hear about it, and, and they wanted to... The, the, candidates to speak on the black agendas and they did it with Bernie Sanders and, and so forth and, you know it, it and you know they, they moved on to it and I remember one time they got to it with Hillary Clinton and Hillary Clinton brought them in the back and she was like okay I'm, you're here but what do you want and they had no answer and she was she kept on pushing okay but you need to have something if if you want people to actually give you something you need to know what you want um and then you know the, right after that they started the campaign zero thing which was a bunch of stuff online about what they wanted for police reform and so forth i don't know how far that went i don't think it um really popped off but that that's the idea the idea is that when you start some of this shit you need to have an agenda um i don't think Kaepernick had an agenda from the beginning. I don't think Malcolm and Reed had a true agenda from the beginning. And I think that's what caused a lot of disruption. Um, and that also kind of doesn't give people any any kind of direction to go, even if you have the leadership. Because where are we going? Like, you got to know me, give me what the address is before I actually could get anywhere. Or else now we're just driving recklessly. We're just we're just pretty much on a road trip to to to, you know, Nowhere. So, you know, that, that I think is, is, is another key essential um, thing that's missing in this, this whole conversation. Oh, OK. So um, when you uh, yeah, you touched on Whitlock, made me think about something that he mentioned um, that I wanted to I wanted to get into a little bit um, for um, with regard to. Um, singing that as a couple, uh, Ka Kaepernick and his wife, um, only 25% black. Um, I thought, I thought that was, a um, that was real. That was real interesting because, um, when you think about it, um, but for the fact that the man who impregnated Colin Kaepernick's mother was, was black. Other than that, other than that, Colin Kaepernick's entire experience um, he, 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 well, other than that, he, he has no real attachment to um, our experience, if I can say it that way. And I think that Jason Whitlock is like, he was like this close to, to, to saying that but the fact does remain, and now we know with, you know, I guess I don't know much about the science of the shit, but how um, that whole PTSD and the, uh, the, the, the stress, the depression, um, you know, um, that comes from the struggle and the experience can be passed down genetically. I mean, I don't, I don't really know. But being that that's all up in the air, then, you know, simply because of that, Colin Kaepernick, you know, um, has.
has the argument. You see what I'm saying? Because even though he may not have lived the experience um, by virtue of the fact that he has his father's blood, you know, it's a possibility that he, you know, um, he's experienced or, you know, that PTSD can be passed down through him. But um, I thought that was pretty interesting because I want to know how y'all feel about how y'all feel about that, man. Because I know historically white people have been um, at the forefront of, you know, these these issues, right? Like I'm talking about, like you know, historically, like you talking about with, with changing the slavery and all that. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? Like way way back, like historically, have been involved. So now, what do we feel about that today? Because um, you know, we just made mention that Mark Schlereth needs to stay out of this. This is, this is not a situation that he should be involved in. You know what I'm saying? But then you have to consider, again, you know what I'm saying? You're John Browns. You got you to gotta consider, like, what if that was the attitude blacks had back then? You know what I'm saying? Like, stay out of this shit. It's got nothing to do with you. Um, I, that's the reason why I brought that up, you know? With Colin Kaepernick, you know, basically growing up in the white experience, um but still trying to be at the forefront of the black experience in a situation, you know, that involves a black experience, which I think about that shit, man. Um, yeah, man, that colorism shit is real. And that colorism shit has been here forever. That colorism shit is, is anywhere where you see white and black, you see lighter skin or darker skin, it is there. It is, it is part of everything that goes along with racism. Um, and classism and, and all these and pretty much um, colonial uh, one, colonizing all of this stuff is, is, is part of that so you know um, that that's always been there and that's pretty much what it sounds like you know I'm, I, I'm not going to speak for Kaepernick personally um, because I don't know his full experience but what I will say the one thing that you know, is unrecognized, especially when you mention PTSD. Um, you know, there is stuff about the genetic stuff um, with the information that you pass down. That is true. Um, there is another factor that no matter what your skin color is, if, if you look pretty much black, I'm light skinned, right? But I'm, I'm treated as black. Black is black. People recognize me as black. That my experience, especially within this country, um, is as a black man, so you know my experiences is also felt. You know, there's another part of genetics in itself. It's called epigenetics, which basically is saying that your your genes um, conform to what you're you're going through right now, your environment. So you could pretty much express PTSD in real time um, because of the the. The experiences that you're going through in America in itself, if you are black, you know, it, you, you're going right through issues. So, you know, that that to me is kind of always a, a, an argument I don't necessarily think is a helpful one um, because we come in all shades and because it is necessarily it's kind of a European invention that is used against us. Um, and then the funny thing, even also him mentioning his uh, wife, who I think he said was Egyptian, which I always felt was weird because he kind of, to me, was mixing the idea of of an ethnicity, uh, her ethnicity with race, which is two different things. You could be Egyptian and be considered black. Um, I don't know if they would consider themselves black, but for me, um, you could definitely have an experience in another country being it. So basically, you could be in Puerto Rico, uh, you know, or be a Puerto Rican, darker skin and face some kind of subjection from the lighter skin people you know um, that's pretty much in every every country you have so I, I don't necessarily get what that means um, besides the fact that her being Egyptian not having an American experience that could be something different as well having outside experience from another country and coming here but um, you know I yeah man I don't I don't it depends on who you are, you know, it's a good thing you mentioned with the John Brown, which, are, you know, nods to the Killer Mike, who's been popping up recently because of the show that he has. And, you know, him mentioning that, I think, in the Breakfast Club interview about the difference between white people, the difference between 
um, somebody who is cool like you, you know what I mean? Y'all don't got to be with each other. Y'all can maybe even hang out and somebody who would die for you. Somebody who would actually ride with you because they believe in you and they, they, they believe they want to fight the oppression that's happening to you and your people and in the world. Um, there are differences and there are differences between black people. The, the one other thing that we, we've seen this week um, to us um, is the whole young black conservative movement. Right. Um, they are just as black. They talk about certain black issues. They talk about things that, that are happening to us as black people. They just have a different way of going about it. They will support a, a uh, party who historic, well, who in modern history, throughout history, not even through modern history, has been considered uh, more the racist party at one point or another, especially since probably the 60s or 70s. All right. Um, they do it to enough to a point to be called sellout. Whether that's true or not, that's that's not up to me, and I, I don't I don't use those terms when it comes to people, um, especially you know in a, in a group. Um, but ultimately, there are different experiences. Is what I'm pretty much trying to say. That basically, whether you are black or you are white, your experience means a lot. Um, if if his experience is white and he still fighting for black causes, to me, that means that he possibly recognized himself as being black because, and then, you know, you know, the thing about it, though, that I'm wondering is because it's it, not something with Obama for me, but the fact is that, honestly, a lot of the fact that he is grown up in a white family and his experience is white and he probably had some opportunities because he was in that white family. To choose to be black should mean something as well. I don't know if it's good or bad because I'm thinking about it right now. Um, and I think it depends on how you use it. So if he's using it, you know, his privileges and, and how far he's got to the point of being a quarterback and he's still speaking about black issues, I think in some ways that could be commended and it should be commended. Um... You know, again, but, you know, now we're, we're in a different part of the situation um, where, you know, it's different questions evolve. But, you know, as far as his original campaign, I don't think that has much to do with it as far as his actual actions now. I'm catching up to y'all messages from by one of my pilots, you know what I'm saying? Stick shifting on the way home. That's why we call it Reality Gurus on the go. You can't even see my face because I'm on the go like a motherfucker. But yeah, uh, two more factors. Um, this is why you got to make your intent, your plans clear to the people, to the public, a la Muhammad Ali. Make it clear, make your message clear, make your your ultimate goal clear to the public so they not all over the place, not knowing whether they should follow you, whether they should trust you, if it's just a show, if you just using the movement to get your job back, if you just, you know what I'm saying, let Nike hijack the movement, you got to make yourself clear, you got to make your words clear, you got to show your face to the public. You got to answer the public. You can't hide. Another thing, too, with uh, social media, you know, is when you get the, the bits and pieces, you know what I'm saying? We all, we, we trying to put shit together, little, little by little, little by little, you know. Um, and ultimately, what we want to see is the finished product of it all, or you know what I'm saying, the the, 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 the the ultimate goal of it all. So we just we just all out here trying to figure this shit the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Like this shit, this shit, this shit is crazy, man. You know. So um yeah, D. So um so with Jason Whitlock and the um, Colin Kaepernick. You know, 25% black, his wife, Egyptian. I think, again, he was this close. This close. Um, I believe what he was alluding to is the fact that the same situation with Obama, that, um, you know, he doesn't come from the experience. He doesn't come from the experience. So now with regard to his wife being Egyptian, right? She may have 
um, she may be a, a, a melanated woman, right? And be subjected to, to some kind of uh, discrimination in her country. We all know slavery wasn't new, right? Slavery wasn't new. Shit had been going back, if you look at history, beginning of fucking time, right? But the difference was in the manner in which the slaves in this country would dehumanize, right? So Whitlock's thing is you ain't go through this and your your descendants ain't go through this. But you running around here representing the struggle. So now to go to what you're saying, D, about, you know, he grew up in a white household and he's identifying with being black. There's something to say about that. It is. But only if his intentions are genuine. If his intentions ain't genuine, he could be just one of these vultures out here, just using this situation as a way to further his own personal agenda, whatever. That's why, back to you, yay. This motherfucker gotta speak. You gotta speak. You, you, you gotta speak. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's commendable. You know what I'm saying? That, you know, that you potentially put your career on the line. You know, it's you know we can't we can't all say that the reason why he's not playing football is because he took the knee. You know what I'm saying? We can't just say that. But um, potentially put your career on the line um, for for a cause like this. You know, we get it, we get it. But you know, like now, um, with this move. Like I said, I just don't see it. You know what I mean? Outside of just keeping the conversation alive, it just looks like, you know, some bitter shit. You know what I mean? That's where I'm at with it. <clears throat> yeah, um, I mean, that's kind of ultimately what I mean by experience. Um, even though her experience might have definitely been different, and I agree with that. Um, you know, when you come here, that that your, your experience changes. Um, and, you know, I kind of want to get off of that a little bit. But, yo, you know, your experience does change when you get out here. You know, I, I you know, there, there comes a time when you, you are an immigrant, right? There was a time in, like, the 80s, all these Caribbean people came in here and, and you know, they looked at different because they had a different work ethic. Um, they were they had a different culture. Um, and they would look different from the black people here. If you ask somebody today, it's all the same. Right, because you, you you recognize it. Basically, now you become familiar with that, and now pretty much they're all the same. So you know, um, you know that that is something that you know I think is is far beyond. There's there's a lot there that's far beyond just the fact of um, your your prior experience and the experience that you're going through now. I think all of it coalesces. So you know, but at the end of the day. I think we all agree, like, yo, you got to speak. I mean, the fact is nobody knows if you're genuine or not. So at the end of the day, Whitlock could be right about that. Whitlock could be right if you are just trying to build off, especially with this situation. I think this situation changes a lot. It it does. Um, There's no disagreement from me at all about that. This, um, well, actually, you know, let me add on. There, there, There was that worry from for me from back to the Nike thing um you know so you know this doesn't help that at all this is basically like what what are you doing like what what is what is your main goal it goes to me back to what is your agenda what are you really trying to do like you know what what is your function right now you know what I mean you started something um you seemingly don't want to be a leader um at least not not in a classic sense, right? You rather you rather be a face. It seems like um, so now that you're there. What 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 is the next step? Like like what are you trying to do? Are you just going to play the record over, or are you going to just criticize the people that you don't agree with and not complete, uh, completely criticize everything because you know. You haven't talked about anybody else. You haven't retweeted anything about anything else. You only retweet these two people. Why is these two, two people? Because you know they have a name, right? So now you feel like they should basically jump on board with you with their name so it could propel your cause, but nobody knows what your cause is. So what are we talking about? 
So at the end, I think that is what is going to create a lot of confusion. That is what is going to get people like Jason Whitlock fired to put under your, your ass. You know what I mean? Um, and and enough to criticize everything about you because right now you're not you're not really doing anything to dispute that. So that's it. I'm about to wrap it up, fellas. Um, for myself, y'all keep talking if you like. But if not, good night. Peace. Hello.